I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. Hi everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus and today we're going to be working on a pair of these uh, Nakona Kangaroo boots. They're out of Kangaroo uppers and we're going to go ahead and be putting on one of our house grade leathers on here. It's not quite a JR sole like some of you may be familiar with but um, it's still a great sole. It's equivalent to what the original factory sole is maybe just a little bit better actually. Um, but it's animal uh, fat treated basically where the JR sole of course is oak bark tanned so that's kind of the major difference but anyways um, so we're gonna go ahead and take everything apart I'm gonna start out by removing the heel the heel base and of course the sole nothing too crazy on here um, and also we're gonna be treating the uppers on these two giving them a little bit of a shine and restoring back some nutrients on that leather so I'll go ahead and uh, get everything started up. I'm not gonna waste your time too much with taking it all apart, but we'll go ahead and move on then. So we'll see you back in just a little while. All right, so we're back here again. We've got the sole off, the heel bases, everything's off. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys real quick. Um, so you can see those little nubs sticking out right there. These are gripper nails that go in on the inside of the boot um, to hold the heel base down right there. and. I was going to show you real quick how we end up removing these just because it's it's quite a bit of work usually to remove them sometimes but anyways we'll clip them off i've already got most of them off i just have three on this boot left we're going to clip them off all the way and then i've got this little softer crepe material that i put in hang on just a second all right sorry about that interruption but anyways uh, we've got the crate piece here we're just gonna stick it on the inside of the boot right there okay make sure to pinch it down just a little bit so it doesn't slide around on me while we're putting it on the last there we go and ah, there it is now we've got our little dowel punch right here Probably have to use a little bit of a bigger one, I guess. Sometimes that one works, sometimes it doesn't. That's one. Two. There's the third one. You probably wouldn't see too well on the inside, but the heads of the nails, they're sticking out just enough where I should oh, feel around. There's a cushion in there too, so it's kind of getting in the way. I may have to punch it just a little bit more, but that's fine. I'll have to do that just a little bit more. Now this little one will come in handy at this point. problem is it's basically by feel but there it goes just popped right out now again we clip these now they're usually somewhere between usually three quarters of an inch up to about an inch and a half in length of nails um, usually those really long ones that are an inch and a half those uh, those things are kind of overkill they're not really needed that long on a heel base such as this but I've come across them it's uh, very crazy looking sometimes but these ones I was assuming that they were going to be short I probably should have shown you guys before I clipped off at least the first section because once I get the heel base off there we go there's the third one once I get the heel base off 
Um, we've got the sole still laying over top of it and the nails are all sticking out everywhere and they stick out probably about this much roughly. Yeah. And I just clip them off so that I don't hurt myself or anything. Plus I still have to pull the sole off and everything on it. But anyways, that's how we remove the nails. I just gotta do this other one. I've already clipped the nails on that and I punched the nails on this one. I was like, wait, probably should show you at least once. I've got other videos where I remove them, but not on the video. So thought I'd show you real quick. All right, anyways, I'll uh, go ahead and move on. Our next step is going to be to sand everything out and then pull out all the old stitches here in the vault and then just start gluing everything up. So we'll see you back here a little later then when we're sticking the soles on, all right? All right, so we're back here again. I've uh, pulled out all the stitches all around the edges. I roughed everything up with the sander and I also took out these little cushion pads that were inside of there. These things are just shot. They're usually garbage anyways. So toss that and we're replacing it with cork, which is a lot better actually. Now the only difference is that you know, the downside with cork, it's not quite as durable as say man-made foam materials, so eventually it will damage, but the other thing is anyways, the cork is better at holding down weight. So the only way it's going to get damaged is if you wear, wear out your sole and wear a hole right there in the middle. So otherwise, you know, if you catch it in time or if you start getting a hole, you're perfectly fine. Um, plus it's underneath, it's protected by everything, the sole, the, the sole, the footbed and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, anyways, it's, it's definitely better for the support features and wicking away moisture as well as support. Now, the other thing is, also I forgot to mention that while I was pulling out all the s stitches around here around the welt, um, I did double check to make sure, of course, if the welt was damaged or not, and it wasn't. It was perfectly fine. And if it's damaged, i got to make sure to fix it while we have the sole off. Otherwise, you know, this gentleman's going to pick up his boots, wear them, and they, they can potentially last him for a few years. Um, or maybe just like a month or two and the welt starts to give out somewhere along with the sole and, you know, it just will turn out a big mess. Uh, got messages everywhere going off. All right, but anyways, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and sand everything out uh, and make sure it's all even and flush and then start gluing up the soles and let those dry. And uh, when it's time to stick them, I'll see you back here in just a little bit then. All right, so we've got everything, of course, glued up. I just pulled the sole out of the oven so it's a little bit softer now. I'm just going to go and go ahead and start sticking it all together. And even though this writing is kind of meaningless, it's only for us cobblers to basically keep track of it and stuff, but I still try to center it a little bit at least as much as possible. Now, if it was the JR sole, I would definitely be trying a little bit harder for sure. Centering that uh, JR logo, it's kind of like one of those things that, you know, we really try to make those ones look good, definitely. I mean, not that we don't try any, any less with this one. It's just that this particular writing here doesn't really show much about it, basically. <clears throat> but anyways, I'll stick it on the press. And I'll show you how the press works, so let me transfer everything over there. All right. So we're over here at our press. Right now it's pressing out the heat for us a little bit. Now the press has different attachments like this last piece here. We got different shapes, sizes. Currently it's on the heel section and then we've got this softer foam right here. You can see it's fairly beaten up. I'm trying to hunt down this particular foam padding. It turns out where I got it from. They don't carry it in stock. So hunt begins for it. But uh, anyways got that on there now this press is able to press everything out at up to 800 pounds of course we don't go up that high just because it's that's a bit overkill i mean we're at a few hundred pounds though but at this point now i've taken it off the heel attachment right there and we're going to do from the heel to about the ball of the foot here pressing everything out and i've got this wedge piece to 
help concentrate more pressure in certain spots at certain angles because of course uh, western boots got a sloped um, arch area because of the higher heel and we definitely want to make sure we accommodate that and we do it on almost all the shoes too just because even dress shoes they're rounded um, but western boots are a little bit more so all right and we only need a few seconds basically because this is of course contact cement so we're not needing to you know leave it on there for a long period of time but just like that is plenty good there so now we're doing from the ball to foot to the toe area here all right that's all done now i'm gonna go ahead and move everything over to our what's called our five and one and i'll show you what that looks like um to press out the sorry kind of cut out on me there but anyways this is what's called our five and one it's a table hand operated machine basically it's like a multi-tool for us cobblers that's a must-have but um at, on this top section here this is what's called the welt press and this is going to help press the welt area down and then this heel ren that's right there also the little plastic heel ren so there's that and then there's the welt of course up here and sorry the boot might get in the way of the camera just a little bit Sorry, I'm trying to angle it. It just goes all the way around like that. There we go. So all the welt is pressed out nicely. Now we're going to go to the cutting section of our 5-in-1 here and just cut off some of this axis. And of course this is a rough cut, so I mean we're not getting extremely close to that welt or the heel run. This is just to cut off some of it so that we don't have to sand all that much, of course. Because otherwise sanding out uh, this much access is just going to take way too long. There we go. Alright, got all that cut off right there. That's a good chunk there. Get rid of that, but looks like it's coming along there, right? And I'll kind of give you an idea. I mean, uh, here on the five and one, we also have what's called a skiver. Um, this is where I get all these chunks lying around that you may be seeing in my videos. They're from running a half sole through and it just skives it for us. Um, I'll show you real quick. So that's what's called a half sole right there. We'll just run it through like this. There we go. And it thins it out nicely for us and makes it nice and skived. And of course we sand it out, but that's that's just to give you an idea of what it does. Um, technically it's more of like a three in one, it does three things, but they call it a five in one just because, you know, the way they describe it, they double describe a few tasks that it does with the press there and the cutter as well. But anyways, that just gives you an idea about this hand-operated table machine that we have here. Um, very important for all cobblers, but always comes in handy. Otherwise, this would make our jobs a bit harder. You could still do some of this stuff by hand, but not as quickly and uh, not as efficiently either. But anyways, uh, at this point, we are done with that. We're going to allow it to cure for some time. And... Afterwards, I'll trim up the edges roughly. I'll sand them out and then trim them, and then we'll get to stitching everything and nailing out the arch and heel area there. So I'll go ahead and uh, finish out the other boot, and we'll see you in a little while then. All right, so we're over here in our patch room now. Um, we've got our outsole stitcher. I did sand out the edges already or trim them out and sanded out this bottom area where the heel base will reattach right there. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and stitch up that welt area there. Spray all that down to soften it up. The animal fat treated soles like these house leather soles, unlike the JR soles, they're fairly soft already, but uh, adding a little bit of water definitely helps. Uh, this helps with uh, the sole sliding as well as the um, needle and all going through. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem doing it dry, but wet definitely makes it a lot better and easier. But anyways, we'll go ahead and get started now.
looks pretty good, at least on the bottom. Clip all this. Nice. Made it all to the into all the uh, original holes there too. Tells fine. All that seems to be fine. And all that's sitting there inside the channel. Now, some of you may be familiar with what's called uh, grooving out a channel first. We basically have a machine that will cut through and open up a channel to allow the thread to sit on the inside there. Well, our machine has a blade on it and we do what's called a closed channel. We can do either one, but the closed channel stitch is a little bit more protective of those stitches for a longer period of time. And definitely on the house grade leather, it's a much better option uh, to do so because it's a little bit softer than say a JR sole. Um, but, you know, it cuts out at the same time simultaneously while it's stitching. There's a little blade right under here. I can lower this. So it presses down right here on that section that's moving. And then afterwards we have an awl comes up from the bottom and then a needle back down over top. So there's three components basically that are simultaneous. Well, not necessarily simultaneously, but it's timed to stitch while all three of the portions are basically penetrating or cutting into the leather all at the same time. That's why this machine is actually one of the very last ones that all cobblers learn on. It's one of the most troublesome machines as well because there are so many components and parts working all at the same time. And um, you know, even with a you know closed channel stitch like we just did, you know, some cobblers actually can't do that even though if they have this machine just because it it always misaligns and takes a lot of practice. And some cobbler shops actually don't even have this machine because of how problematic it can be when it breaks down. You know, fixing it or tuning it back up is very, very challenging. So some shops don't even have one of these machines. Um, not necessarily even in this model. I'm just saying in any of the outsole stitchers, they just glue on the soles and that's it. Call it a day. But uh, that's just not okay. And there's a handful of cobblers that are very good out there too. You know that that definitely um, definitely use this machine. They won't take the you know the shortcut or anything on it. You know, even some of the cobblers that do some, I guess you could say, not the best work out there, at least they even try with that, and that's already a huge step up, you know. This machine, again, like I said, it's fairly finicky to work with, and takes a lot of practice. I've, I've screwed up my fair share growing up when I was learning. Um, my fair share of soles, luckily I was uh, practicing on just blank soles, it wasn't customer's boots or shoes. But I've definitely screwed up my fair share of times. Um, even even with plenty of practice, you could end up making a mistake on this machine, and it can happen. Luckily, it's something that is most likely fixable. Otherwise, if it can't be fixed, I have to tear off this sole and start over again. And thankfully, I haven't had an, had any kind of mistakes like that. Oh, dang it! I need to find some wood uh, up here. <laughs> Knock on wood so I don't mess up ever again like that. But anyways, that's it right there for the stitching. I'll go ahead and do the other one off camera, and then afterwards we're gonna go through and press down this welt area, close everything up, and then start uh, hammering the nails in all around here. So I'll see you back in just a little while then. All right, so we've gone through the welt press again and pressed out all that channel right there so it's nicely closed up. You can still see the stitch, of course, there, but it's sitting in there nicely and closed. But now we're gonna go ahead and run some nails in. Now I did forget to mention, this is what's called a half welt. So the welt actually only goes up to about right here. And then this whole section here is not uh, stitched down because there's no welt coming through here and it's nailed down. Usually on Western boots anyways, even this heel area isn't stitched. I've only come across a small handful of boots from that are Western style that have a full 360 degree welt. Um, they also have the three quarter basically, they call it something Else. I can't remember exactly I'm sorry I spaced out on it but where the welt comes up to right underneath where the heel base starts so the stitches come all the way through and uh, stop underneath that heel base so they're hidden away and nailed down just on this back heel section um, those ones usually don't need to be nailed down they're just stitched either way because they have a full welt like that but on these because they're a half welt we gotta nail them down and we use these little 
brass clinch nails. Now they are definitely longer than um, than what the sole is, but they're designed why they're called clinch nails. They're designed once they go through the sole and uh, any midsoles or anything like that, they hit this metal last that we have on here underneath this boot and they curve and turn into a hook and clinch down nicely and holds everything together better that way. But just uh, nail it all down and it holds that sole down a lot better in these areas. I mean, we'll still be running nails in once we got that heel base from the inside that are uh, what are called gripper nails. In our industry, at least, they're called gripper nails. In other industries, they have something similar, but they call them other things. But in our industry, they're gripper nails. That's what they're known as, mainly. And those will help hold down that heel area more with that sole as well. But on the back here, underneath this uh, heel base area, we'll just go ahead and run these nails through, just like that. And we usually do about seven of them. Sometimes we have to do a nine, like a different pair I just did a little while ago, because we were extending this heel a little bit, the lip on it, so that it can accommodate spurs. But this one we're keeping as is, and so we only need seven in total. And that's just the back of the heel area there. So we come up to that line right there and that's how far we're gonna go. Now we're gonna do the arch or vamp area. You know, some people call it differently. I call it the arch area, um, more of an orthopedic type of terminology, I guess you can say. And others call it vamp. But in this area, in order to keep it nice looking, we use an awl first like this to punch holes a little bit. Because especially in this area, we've got that steel shank coming through and this is supposed to be rounded right there. And so when we're putting these clinch nails in, they have a tendency to you know, turn on us before they go into the leather all the way and kind of go crooked. And it just looks horrible because that nail head's gonna end up damaging the look of that sole. And we definitely don't want that to happen. So beforehand, we punch at least, uh, well, not at least, go through and punch all these holes here with the awl. Makes it a lot easier and nicer looking as well. We're not punching all the way through either. It's just uh, just maybe about three quarters of the way through the leather sole itself, so. There we go. All right, so we've got those. And I'll just do one side for you to see the holes and the nails already in there. Sorry for the noise on the hammering, but again, this is a cobbler shop. We do hammer a lot of things here. So gonna make a little noise with it. Another cobbler by the name of Steve, who does videos also. I guess he's got a very specific follower of his that Likes to go and crap about the hammering. So, it's for anybody that wants to do the same thing. I'm warning you, there's gonna be noise. At least, you know, I don't have other crazy noises going on in the background. But that's what it looks like there. So we've got the nails all in there. The, if the glare would go away, but that's what it looks like. And there's the other side with the holes punched there. And they just go back and forth and back and forth. Usually that's what they're like. Now, some boots also have what are called lemon pegs, the little wood pegs in there. And we do the same thing. We punch the holes, we just punch them much deeper though. And then we put the lemon pegs in there. They're just little wood ones and I can't remember where mine are. Ah, there they are. Well, there's at least a few here. We don't use them all that often, but they just look like that right there. 
That's what's called lemon pig. And they do the same thing technically as these brass clinch nails, but you gotta remember, um, you know, if, if you want them done, you have to do it by request only. We will only do it by request. Uh, we won't do the same thing as the company did who may have put lemon pegs in, but you have to remember it is wood, and wood has a tendency to degrade, to degrade a lot easier uh, than metal ever would, and can potentially just fall apart. So it's one of those things that I won't advise for. Um, I would advise against it, go for the brass ones. These are brass, of course, all the way through, so they're not gonna corrode or rust, and it's metal. It'll hold up much, much longer, and especially because the way that they curve and clinch down on the materials everywhere, it really holds everything together much nicer. Or the lemon pegs, I mean, we have to put more of them in, and you know they, they fail all the time. I see them fail all the time in this area. You, know, you just catch it at the right angle and the wrong timing and that section can just start pulling up and the only way to fix that basically is a resold process where in case it ever does happen and I you know in quotations that in case if it ever happens which I haven't come across uh, these nails failing but if they do we can fix that a lot easier than the lemon pigs. We don't necessarily have to resole it, but if they do fail, we could easily fix that without having to tear off the sole because the old lemon pigs, they get in the way where the nails, there are ways and methods for us to take those nails back out and replace them. Anyways, I'll go ahead and finish off these boots here and glue up the heels on it and the heel bases and just keep going on. So we'll see you later. All right, so I wasn't able to finish these out uh, last night, unfortunately. I got a little backed up with a few other things, but time to finish these out this morning now. And this morning I already forgot, it's been a last long week and I accidentally put some edge dressing on the heel. Luckily I caught it in time, either way, it's not gonna do much to it. We're just gonna sand it out and you know it's gonna go back to being a neutral color like that all light. But anyways, we're here at our uh, smoother sand paper belts. Um, we're gonna go ahead and smooth everything out, all the edges. Hit the inside here with what's called our brister cone down here behind the machine. It's a cone-shaped sanding piece. And then up here we've got our numb cake that kind of helps us finish up things and touch it up. So we'll go ahead and get started now. So we got it smoothened out a little bit. Now at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put the varnish ink back on there. That I just sanded off on both boots though this time and all the way around. But before that I'm gonna go ahead and get inside here right in that vamp area and just cut a little bit of this out. You can see some of that leathers folded up a little bit on the sole. And I don't know, I guess show you right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out very carefully with a hooked razor blade that we have and it kind of like makes it look nicer. It's more of an aesthetics thing. There's nothing you know, wrong with leaving it. A lot of places leave it, but for me, it is wrong personally. I, I, don't, I don't like it. It doesn't look right. It's not clean looking or anything. So got to clean it up a little bit. After we do the edging on there, I'm going to go ahead and varnish out the edges on there with wax. And of course, you know, buff it up and today's the weekend so I got the whole family here with me again anyways but uh, we'll go ahead and move on then and uh, do the bottom stain afterwards so we'll see you in a little bit. Alright so I did the edging off of the video of course for you guys so I'm not wasting your time if you really are interested in seeing how edging is done 
but most of my other videos have that but I gotta finish these boots out a little bit quicker anyways and videos do take a little more time unfortunately for that but now at this point uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sand out the bottom on here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a finish on it afterwards so we're, we're back over here again at our same machine here that we just sanded out the edges but we're gonna sand out the bottom now and we're gonna start out just a little bit here this takes off some of the access and then we're gonna move up here I'm not gonna put the camera any closer because it gets very very dusty um, I'm actually gonna have my shop vac going off at the same time so um, so that it sucks all that dust up but I just don't want dust covering up the whole lens here so I'll leave it at the same spot for you guys to be able to see all right Alright, so we've got all that bottom standed out now. Now I'm going to have to blow off all the dust and go ahead and start putting on the um, bottom stain on it and I'll let you guys check that part out. Um, I'll also be treating the uppers on these. I'll actually do a separate video because um, this is kangaroo again and it falls into that exotic category. So I'll do a separate video on that if you want to check that out. Otherwise, um, after I'm done treating it, we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. But for now, we'll go ahead and put that bottom stain on. So we'll see you back in just a little bit. All right, so at this point, we're just gonna do the bottom stain now. And what we end up using is the Tarago Professional uh, Shine or um, Self Shine Cream. It's a larger jar like this. That's the only one that they come in. It's a little different than their small jars that you see sometimes, if anyone's familiar with the Tarago products. Um, this one does seem to have a bit more harder waxes like the carnauba wax in there and it just gives it a nicer finish especially because this is a harder um, harder material definitely like originally these are of course intended for uppers but they don't tend to work very well on uppers and I would not recommend using it for such a thing so grab that out of the way here but for bottom staining Stuff works perfect because it dries up nicely and doesn't rub off as easily and penetrates fairly decently into that leather as well. Plus it's not as messy I would say as a regular bottom stain that a lot of other cobblers use. Um, it just doesn't seem like it's that messy at all but there we go. A little bit of light spot there. Not too bad. Now let it dry for just a little bit and then I'm gonna buff it up and I'll do that um, here in a little bit and I'll show you at the end of the video what it looks like all buffed up afterwards. It's just running it on one of our machines but I'll go ahead and finish this out then and um, I'll see you back here in a little bit to wrap things up. All right everyone so we're back here again after recording the video for the upper treatment now. If you want to check that out, I'll have a link in the description most likely for it. But there you have it. We've got the house grade JR leather sole on there. Put that Tarago finish. Of course, this is kind of a you know more rough finish and everything. Well, not a rough finish. It's not a um, a full solid one color. It's got more of like that uh, regular natural leather look. Some people call it the wood look. It looks like wood on the bottom or something. But you know, to me, I consider that. A leather looked finish and everything but I re-glued the insoles in there also I uh, did that off camera I forgot to mention actually I was doing that during the shine process while a few things were drying up but if you want to again check out the whole process of how to treat kangaroo check that out I'll have the link down below otherwise if you have any questions or comments uh, please leave them down below or you can give us a call send us a message or stop by if you're local here in the Denver area um, you know if uh, you're wanting us to work on any of your shoes, boots, or other leather goods, feel free to stop by and drop those off. If you're not local, you can always go to our website, cobblersplus.com, and uh, go to the ship and order tab and follow the instructions on how to mail in a pair of boots, shoes, or other items you may have for us to work on. 
if you have a more specific question, you want uh, you know price estimates or anything, and you're not local, send us some pictures. Uh, more pictures are definitely better than none. Trying to describe what the repair may possibly be, it's very hard for us to understand it. What uh, what you may be trying to describe, because if you're trying to tell me that the top part needs to be stitched, I may be assuming that it's right here or way up here when in reality the top part I've had people mention and it's the welt that's damaged. So again, descriptions are not very helpful unfortunately, especially if you're not in our industry and you don't know the exact terminology for everything. Pictures, pictures, pictures. They help us a lot. So if you want a price estimate, that's the best I can do is just an estimate. It could be a ballpark from say $5 to $100 type of thing also. So keep that in mind as well. It's very hard even from pictures on some things to tell, but pictures really, really help a lot more. Otherwise, um, you know, if it's something basic like resoling and, you know, fixing a pull tab like this here, those seem to be fairly basic, but any other type of stitch work or other damage, please send some pictures in that case. Or again, if you're local, stop by. I'd rather see it in person anyways to let you know for sure. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, I'm trying to work on more and more videos as time goes by. I hope you've liked the processes that I've been taking so far with uh, the resole and then doing a separate video if we do an upper treatment on them as well. And I do hope you've been enjoying that. It's a de they're mostly detailed videos. I know they're a little bit long. Maybe you're just enjoying them, you know, just because they're relaxing or something, but, uh, you know, or interesting. I just hope you've been, been enjoying that. I may be trying to make a couple of very short videos where I don't even talk in them, so you don't have to hear my annoying voice. You know, maybe you think I sound annoying. I had somebody comment uh, somewhere that I sounded like some famous guy and I can't remember who it was anymore. I may, I'll have to check that out and uh, I'll probably mention that in the next video or something because it was, it was funny. I mentioned it to my wife and she didn't recognize who that was until I showed a picture and she started laughing. But I guess I sound like that guy apparently. Anyways, uh, you know, please subscribe, share the video if you like, and also hit that notification bell icon if, uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos and you'll get notified as soon as we have more and more coming out. But just see you next time then.